The realization of enlightenment, once it's overcome, once all the bliss and tear-filled eyes and humor and coming down from the clouds of heaven and paradise and this emptiness and Christ consciousness and Buddha, nature, love, Ramana, Papaji's wisdom and everything passes. There was a very simple realization that that you, the one that be, is beyond the human state, has no say, absolutely no say, in changing or doing or improving or participating in something that is really fictional. Or to say it's fictional looks like you're derogatizing. It is a, it is the most worthwhile thing to experience is overcoming human state and realizing that everything is a game. Even the corruption, the encryption of worlds, the, the it's been going on for centuries and centuries and centuries of of changing the rules, changing the, the goalposts, changing everything, changing, changing, constantly changing to stop to try and stop this human thing dissolving, which will never dissolve. So we're playing the game, fighting constantly to, to try and stop something that's never going to happen. <laughs> but it's fun. It's only fun when you see with enlightened eyes. Before, it is torture. It is absolute torture, total suffering. There is a recognition that so many who appear to be mentally ill are simply in, in an area of consciousness that is ill, that is ill through consciousness's own trying to survive. There is no need to put anything in place of survival until it experiences some sort of rejection. Very similar to the body. The body heals itself quite well with no medicine, no doctors, nothing. Until, until it feels like the something has rejected it. The mind has rejected it. The Nature has rejected it. There are so many things that can reject the body. But you, the one inside, you cannot be rejected. You cannot even be ejected. <laughs> the body is ejected from you when out of body experiences taking place. That you become so vast, that you look so big, and you look down as if you have left the body, but the body has just simply stayed in its state, its form, solid state, and you have moved into your true, true universal state. To, <coughs> to give very simple advice to a human state from an enlightened point of view is become the therapist of yourself. That doesn't mean to say you ignore what you have been conditioned into um, e expecting. Doctors, surgeons, teachers, all these job titles. But to understand yourself, to understand anything within this universe, to go light years ahead of science and religion, you become the self-therapist and simply sit with yourself with no intention, no expectation, no experience, no association with past and future, as if you are witnessing something miraculous, that you are 
appearing to be stuck inside something that is a miracle? And how can something your size and scale and infinity fit into this thing? Surely you cannot simply be stuck within this thing. This thing is stuck with you until you let it go. See? Think of these words. This whole suffering is stuck with you until you let it go, until you let the idea of God go, until you let the idea that anything exists outside of you go, until you let the idea that this body is you go, until you let all ideas and concepts and knowledge go. What else can a therapist do but to simply listen, be there, and understand that I am really the most naive student. I want to learn from the beginning. You see? I want to learn from the beginning before I came into this body. But I want to experience the relationship I have with this body. And I want to re really know the story about why I selected a body. And from where I was before I selected this body. And all of this information is held within this body. But the one who inquires it cannot be mind. Mind is not interested in past and future. It keeps pointing you to past and future as if they're real. Because mind believes whatever it has been told to believe. So if it has been told to believe that past and future is an essential thing for you within this body to experience, it will obey. It will provide images of past and future. Until you say to this mind, you know what mind, you don't have to pull me into the future and pull me into the past. Just being with me, just being as I am, just being as one with I, then we have merged. We are now non-dual. We are not separate from anything. We are not separate from past. We are not separate from future. Everything is happening within this one moment that I am. Totally whole with allness. Enlightenment is simply giving up all the things that you thought <laughs> were true, important. But it's not you give them up. You simply recognize that they were only there as a temporary thing to help you merge with the true God, with the true total beyond existence. Before life, during life, after life, is the same. There is no before, there is no after. There is only life. The words before and after were born as like the body was born. And when the body dies, it looks like the body is dead. It looks like the one inside is dead. Only before and after die. Life before, life, life after. Before and after die, life, life, life. Always life. Enlightenment is a recognition that there is nothing here that can be born and nothing here that can die. What is here is infinitely always here. In the present moment, you can't go anywhere. In the past, mind can appear to take you somewhere. 
but the past is always here. The future mind can promise you things and can paint pictures of what the future will be like, but the thought of future with mind is here. Only here exists, and it never goes. Namaste.